Well, hello. This is Reverend Brian Richards here. Um, I'm not with you today because I'm up at Port Macquarie. I've just done this recording so uh, we can uh, be preaching the Word of God to you. And I could be at Port Macquarie uh, receiving some ongoing uh, professional development. Um, it's a training seminar that I, I attend once a year uh, just to maintain my independent uh, license for um, the uh, Word of Faith Ministries which is a part of Divine Connections of Christ is a part of Word of Faith Ministries so don't be confused by that our registration uh, name is Word of Faith Ministries but we can have several churches around the place and uh, many different names so Divine Connections of Christ is uh, the name for Tari. Um, we also, while I'm at it, I'll just mention that we are in association of uh, faith churches and ministers. That is uh, who we are fellowshipping with um, for ordination purposes. And um, Elanette will be ordained on the 14th of August uh, next month and uh, we shall uh, have a representative come and visit us from the Association of Faith Churches and Ministers Jim Newton shall come up and uh, give us his blessing so that will be a, a great time don't miss it uh, that will be sometime at the end of August we'll drag him up here <laughs> uh, so what I want to share with you today is uh, the goodness of God. I realize that looking through my book, um, Will You Be a Horse for God? This is a, a, a really um, a great achievement that I've um, written a book. Um, um, when I first came to Christ, I wasn't able to, to write even a letter, never mind a book. But um, through embarrassment and my education wasn't that good. Um, <clears throat> I uh, am now able to write books, which I find great pleasure. But that book there, Will You Be a Horse for God, and other books that are on the table, are for the mature Christian, um, a disciplined disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, being a mature Christian, you need strong meat. So a uh, written those books for that purpose. Today, you, whether you're a mature Christian, or whether you're just uh, young in the Lord, well, today you will receive a glass of milk and also strong meat for those that are full age. I've learned over the years, since 1984, I've been ordained minister, I've learned that we have to go back sometimes far go back further than our faith or further than our pride would allow in order to grow again we need to have a look at the foundations one of my teachers with Cole Stringer he would say have a check up from the neck up as soon as you get up because the the mind is the part of the soul the soul is the mind the will and the emotions um, is the battleground the mind is a battleground. Sometimes we, uh, we're we told to present our body. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Present your body to God, a living sacrifice, and be not conformed to the ways of the world, but be ye transformed as we re renew your mind with the word of God. So <clears throat> the Lord knows that that is the battleground in the mind. And um, if we defeated in the mind like I was saying last week Cassius Clay you know the greatest fighter of them all other than uh, <clears throat> you know he was the greatest boxer and uh, he knew that if he could beat them in the mind if he could give them the doubt and fear before they got in that ring all he had to do is lay a glove on them and they would it would be a knockout you know they beat them in the mind before they even stepped in the ring and uh, Satan is a great deceiver. He tries to beat you in the mind 
and uh, therefore he can put sickness on you, he can put um, poverty or anything on you if you have unbelief in your mind or doubt or fear in your mind today is the day to get rid of it it starts from salvation how you receive salvation is you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead you shall be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and by your confession is made unto salvation you have done that today to be a Christian then you need to continue with your believing and continue with your faith confession to receive everything else from God which is um, the greatest revelation that you can receive is the forgiveness of God if you know that you are forgiven in God that you are forgiven in Christ then you have confidence towards God you'll have confidence towards man is that true if you have confidence towards God knowing that you are forgiven of all past sins and all future sins for that matter if you know that you have an assurance that you are forgiven then you'll have confidence with people isn't that true you have confidence towards God you'll have confidence with any person that you meet are uh, yet to meet and any sin that you have committed in the past is totally eradicated and taken away not from your memory but from God's memory he will not remember your sins no more so Satan tries to defeat you by thinking that he's still there that you know other people have not forgiven you for it well it's their problem you know if you have repented truly turned away from your sin and walk in righteousness then you have confidence towards God you'll have confidence towards the people that maybe that you've done wrong to and you can say look I'm sorry if you don't forgive me then that's your problem but I am sorry and I, I, I walk in righteousness now God has forgiven me let's start in the word of God uh, in 1 John as the epistle of John not the gospel of John the epistle of John uh, chapter 1 and we'll read from verse 7 to 9 this is one of the greatest revelations that you can have knowing that you're free from condemnation free from your past and you press on towards the prize of the high calling in God what do you want to achieve in God you can achieve anything if you know that you're free from your past okay praise God 1 John the epistle of John chapter 1 and we start reading from verse 6 he says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth that's pretty obvious isn't it but if we walk in the light as he is in the light then we fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin and if we say we have no sin then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and if we say we have not sinned then we make him a liar <laughs> and the word is not in us see so my little children these things I write unto you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous who is the propitiation of our sins and not of ours only but the sins of the whole world Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world however if you was the only one in the world that needed forgiveness today Jesus Christ would have had to come and die just for one just for one person so you can take this as an individual um, appointment an individual invitation if you like you know 
Jesus Christ died for your sins. Take it personally. Jesus Christ died for your sin so you could be free today and walk in righteousness. This is one of the greatest revelations that we could ever have, that we are forgiven. Have you received it? Yeah. I know that I didn't receive it for, for years. I didn't receive it. I walked in condemnation. And this is not a part of my sermon, but it's coming anyway. So in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, it says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's have a quick look at it. I can't get it real quick. In Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 1, <laughs> I like what Kenneth Copeland said. This is the most up-to-date word there is. Uh, the most up-to-date word there is. I mean, it was written 2,000 years ago or such, there about. But people say, you know, uh, does the same word apply today, uh, even though it was written for, for others? Uh, yes. This New Testament is the most up-to-date word um, that is, it has, was written then and it still applies for us today is the most up-to-date word there is and we build societies from it we build um, constitutions from it constitution for America constitution for Australia for England you know uh, these constitutions that the people that build their countries and kingdoms out of is from the word of God based on the word of God and so there, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. We don't believe that we have to pay any price for our sin. Jesus Christ was the one sacrificed for all the sin of all mankind. And as we identify with that sacrifice that was paid, on the cross, then we receive the forgiveness because he took our sin on that cross. He paid, if you like, in advance. Paid the price for sin. The price for sin, as we know, the wages of sin is death, you know. But Jesus Christ paid the price in advance. So any sin that was committed and any sin that is committed still in your life. As you turn to the cross, as you turn to Jesus and say, forgive me, I've sinned again, you receive forgiveness again for your sin. Does that sound fair? Does that sound like, does that sound correct? That doesn't sound right to me. I mean, how can he love me that much that he paid the price for the sins now that I've forgiven now and anything that I commit in future is paid for in full. Yes, that's, a, that's the goodness of God. And as you meditate on the goodness of God and the provision that God has provided for us, then we know that we're forgiven. We will have confidence with any person that we come with come to meet and I've met a lot of uh, important people in life uh, come before uh, people of high authority and they can see that I have confidence with them because I have confidence with God if you know you're forgiven and you know your place in Christ you'll have confidence with men some of us have been dealing with these issues for years uh, through lack of confidence with God. But if you have confidence with God, you'll have confidence with men. 
when you want to get a job, when you want to get employment, you'll have confidence with people because you have confidence with God. And the, the world don't know the difference between confidence with God and credentials. You know that? The world identifies as something different about you and they put that down as experience or or a, uh, a knowingness so they give you the job anyway um, <clears throat> praise God in James chapter 1 we go on to James James chapter 1 it says can it all joy I'll get there wait a minute <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, My brethren, can it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that is the trying of your faith that worketh patience. Let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any, if any lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives liberally and unabraileth not and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. Let us not, let not, for let not any man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, uh, if you're double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You understand that? You ask in wisdom, ask in faith. But if you're double-minded about it, if you have doubt, fear, or unbelief, and you think, well, okay, I'm asking God for wisdom here. I need to make a decision or I need to uh, do something important. Or I'm going to ask God for wisdom. You ask God for wisdom and believe you receive. Once again, just like salvation, you believe you receive when you pray. You shall have whatsoever you say. Hallelujah. Mark eleven twenty two, Mark eleven twenty two and twenty three. You speak to the mountain, do not doubt. You know, in your heart. Sometimes the doubt, fear, and unbelief is in the head, but don't let it come into the heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Isn't that true? So don't let it get into your heart. It says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it. Other issues of life in Proverbs 4, it says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of your heart, comes the issues of life. See, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. And what will it speak? Will it speak faith or will it speak unbelief? Will it speak out of the confidence you have with God or will it speak out of the doubt, fear and unbelief? What is in your heart today? Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. Hallelujah. All right. So we we'll continue with James a little while further. And we have a look at uh, verse 12. It says, Blessed is a man. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. See, temptation will come to you. Trials and temptation will come to you. Especially today, if you receive this word, you'll be tested on it. Who, who's the one who tests you? Uh, Sometimes, I've, and I hear it all the time, they say, oh, God's testing me. Ah, wait a minute, let's, let's have a look at what the word of get about. It says tests and trials, uh, and where they come from. All right. It says, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Ooh, praise God which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say, that's where we're tempted, we say things that we don't really want to say. When the pressure is on us, we say things out of our mouths that should never be said because we're under the pressure. But who's the one who puts us under pressure? Is it God or is it somebody else? We do have an enemy, his name is Satan, and Satan will rob kill and destroy and how he does it he puts the pressure on to try and get you to say something that you don't need to be said you ever tried to 
pull back your words and you say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, and it's, been, it's out there and it's doing his destruction. Okay. <clears throat> we can always repent of that and put the blood of Jesus over your confession and say, I destroy those words that I've just spoken out. I break the power of those words. I speak the blood of Jesus over those words. And I say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you spoke bad about somebody, you speak the blood of Jesus on them, and you say, no weapon formed against them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, for our righteousness is of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55:11 says, My word shall go forth, and it will not return void or empty. It will accomplish that which I please. Hallelujah. So we know the word of God is the weapons of our warfare are not carnal through God. Through God. They are they're not carnal, but through God they pull down every stronghold of unbelief. Uh, we put on the weapons of our warfare. Um, we put on the armor of God. By faith, we walk in that armor. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, we speak that sword, and use that sword, use the word of God as a two-edged sword, pierces and divide the joints of the matter, and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. And um, as a Christian, we learn to fight spiritually is the spiritual war that we're in as a spiritual enemy that we fight we don't fight flesh and blood but principalities and powers of wicked spirit satan comes to put a pressure on you to get you to say something out of your mouth that shouldn't be said and once it's out there you can blot it out by the blood of jesus you can say no that's not what i want that's not what I said. What I said, and I mean, is this. And you speak the good things out of your mouth. You speak out of the buns of your heart. The mouth will speak, and it will come to pass. Praise the Lord. We, <clears throat> we have... Uh, let me just finish this, and I'll go on. It says, uh, Let no man say... Verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man, neither tempt he any man, for every man is tempted and is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved. Do not stray away from the truth, he's saying. Do not err, my beloved. For every good and every perfect gift comes down, uh, come, uh, gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. There is no variableness or shadow of turning. God is a good God all the time. It doesn't get good one day and bad another. If you're bad, it doesn't turn bad on you because you turn bad on somebody else. No. If you forgive and if you say, Lord, I'm sorry, then he's always there to forgive and have mercy on you, have love on you. Even though you've been ugly with somebody else, God will forgive as you turn towards him, say, Lord, I'm sorry. And you turn towards that person that you've hurt and you just say, I am sorry. And I speak the blood of Jesus over my confession. I am sorry. I shouldn't have said that. So it's all by faith. My God, we live by faith, do we not? And it's by faith that we achieve these things. It's by faith we achieve our goals. Continue in your faith. I'll continue with James a little bit more, is it? Okay, we turn over the page. I've got uh, marked here. Verse 22, chapter 1, verse 22. It says, Be doer of the word of God and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. You see, if we be hearer of the word and we're not a doer, then we deceive ourselves. 
We don't need the, a Satan to come and deceive us. We deceive ourselves and we're not a doer of the word of God. It says, if any, any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural uh, face in the glass and beholding he, himself and goes away and straight away you forget what manner of man he was. You forget what you look like, you know. You think, well, yeah, did I ever shave today or not? No, I didn't, you know. And so sometimes I do that, you know, forget uh, uh, to even look in the mirror, you know. And But sometimes you look in the mirror and then you go away and you think, no, uh, and you get it, you have to put your hand there to find out if you had a shave today, you know. That's, we deceive ourselves when we forget what we have seen in the Word of God. Amen. So, he says, uh, where am I? I forgot. Uh, but a doer of the work, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. See? But whosoever looks unto the perfect Lord of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. If any man among you seem to be religious and brightened on his tongue, see, that's where he comes, that's where the Satan deceives you. He puts the pressure on and gets you to say something you shouldn't say. And uh, sometimes you're only speaking from your head, you're speaking from your flesh, you know, you're not speaking from your heart. And when you're really speaking from your heart, you speak out the love and the joy, and you know, because Jesus is in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of Jesus in you, out of the abundance of love that he's got in you, out of the abundance of the fruit of the Spirit that is in your spirit, when you speak out the abundance of the heart, it shall come to pass. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the man will speak. And when you speak, you'll decree a thing and it will come to pass. If any man among you seem to be religious and broiled none his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religious is in vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, that if we visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. That's what we should be doing. <clears throat> And uh, somebody says to me, the last time I ministered this word, somebody said to me, well, how about, you know, you're saying that God is a good God and he cannot be tempted with evil. How about the, the people that was tempted with evil or the, 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 the tests and trials that other people had, like Job. They always come up to Job, you know. Job, there's perfect man before God and he was uh, stricken and smitten and everything else and you know you know the story and um, sometimes people even say oh I'm going through a Job experience you know and they blame God you know <laughs> even Job I mean that's Old Testament anyway we, we live under the New Testament anyway you know we are New Testament people you know you evangelize you evangelize as an a New Testament evangelist, not an Old Testament evangelist. Anyway, if we look at the Old Testament, we look at Job, and we think, well, God afflicted him with all these things. No, it wasn't. It actually says that Job was a perfect man before God, and uh, in them days, Satan could go before God and accuse you and me, accuse the brethren before God, you know, uh, accuse, the, the say that he's not so perfect as you think, you know, if you smite him, he'll curse your face, that's what he says in Job, you know, and uh, it says, you've put a hedge around him, a protection, I can't get near him, but if you used to lower that edge now, I'd smite him, and he would curse you to the face, and God said, I don't think he would, but, uh, you know, the hedge of protection is taken down. And that what that hedge of protection was is the is confession. Job's confession changed. Job's words changed. And he was saying that even though you smite me and, uh, you know, 
I shall uh, believe God, because he was a, a perfect man before God in his heart. But as we look at uh, Job chapter 10, is it, uh, towards the end of the book of Job, we find out that Job actually repented of some of the things that he said. You know, they use the words of Job when they, in a funeral, they say, ash to ashes, the dust to dust, the Lord giveth and the Lord take it away. It was a lie then, and it's still a lie today. But people uh, use that to understand the death. Well, Jesus come to give it life and give it more abundantly. And he, he never takes it away, even if you're unrighteous. That's why we confuse, sometimes Christians confuse, and they look at the worldly person, they say, how hey, come he's so prosperous and he's got everything he needs, he doesn't need God. Well, my Bible tells me the wells of the wicked is later for the just. Anyway, we, you know, uh, w w when we need it, he'll come to us. And God will make sure that it will come to us because it all belongs to God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. God is a good God. He doesn't go bad all of a sudden because you do. He doesn't get ugly all of a sudden because you do. Well, I do, you know. I have to repent of something nearly every day. And, you, you know, if it's angry, well, you know, the anger of God works not righteousness, so I have to repent of that. And I say, Lord, I'm sorry. And I know that anger is no good. And so you get rid of it. And you get rid of the sin and you get on with the job. Don't walk in condemnation. i tell you something. Present my body to God a living sacrifice every day Romans chapter 12 1 and 2 by the time I get to the shower and I get in the shower I am working out my day and I'm talking to God you know the best way to talk to God is when you uh, when you're doing chores that don't need the thought patterns you can wash yourself without even thinking about it you just do it every day well if you know your mind is not on what you're doing, put it on God. <coughs> Give that time to God and commit the works to the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit the works unto the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. Yes, we have enemies. Yes, we have enemies to the cross. And uh, Jesus says that, you know, those that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And it's not easy. And no one said it's going to be easy. Jesus says my burden is light. Well, the yoke is easy, burden is light. But he didn't say you have an easy time of being a Christian. It's, it's sometimes it's hard being a Christian. But it's so rewarding in the end. You know, when we get it right, then... We get everything else in God too when we get it right. I just want to read a scripture to you. Proverbs, I can't find it. It's in the Old Testament, of course. Proverbs chapter 16. Let's have a look at it. And we start from verse 3. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And the thoughts shall be established. Praise God. That's wonderful scripture, isn't it? We'll continue to read because down in verse 7 is something else very important. It says, The Lord has made all things by himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in his heart is abomination to the Lord. Yea, hand in hand, though hand in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies at peace with him. You know, people think they be... I mean, you ever befriended someone? And you say, when you're in trouble, you say, oh, well, you know... I'm a friend of so-and-so. And you think uh, it's going to get you out of trouble? 
The Lord says it won't get you out of trouble. If you deserve punishment, you're going to get punishment. You know, well, you turn to God and you say, Lord, forgive me. Then the punishment is paid in Jesus Christ, you know. But he says there that even the wicked, you know, uh, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged and the fear of the, of the Lord, men depart from evil. They'll depart your righteousness, your reverence towards God. Other men will fear the Lord and depart from their evil. He says, everyone that is proud in his heart is abomination to the Lord and those that join hand in hand shall not be unpunished. See, they know that you're a righteous man. They'll shake a hand thinking that he's going to rub off on them, but it's not going to rub off on them unless they repent and get the life right with Jesus. But even the evil men in the world, you know, they're, they're evil. they got wick, wicked money. They know there's something about you that they money cannot buy, and that is righteousness of God. And little do they know that it's a free gift anyway. You don't have to lose your money to get it. You just turn your life to Jesus, and it's a free gift. And sometimes they can't receive the free gift. They want to pay, you know. Did you want to pay for your sins? I know I did. As a, as a, as a, a Catholic boy, I learned about the, the penance. What penance have I got to pay for this, you know? <laughs> and after we've been to confession, I used to tell my mother, <laughs> and I used to tell other people, uh, gee, I must have been bad this week. I had to say, 10 Hail Marys and the glory be <laughs> before I get absolution. But you see, it's not by works that we get absolution. It's by faith that we get absolution and forgiveness of our sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteous as we choose to walk in, in the light of his word. And uh, we're to take an example from uh, the Word of God where it says that we are to love others and to have mercy towards others. I was in James. I'll just, another scripture in James that was, I've skipped over. I'll go back to James and I'll close with this. James chapter 2. And verse 13, James chapter 2, uh, James chapter 2, verse 13 to 18, I'll read. It says, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy, the mercy rejoices against judgment. In my Bible, it's got a, in the margin there about uh, uh, mercy. Uh, mercy exceeds judgment. Praise God! So we had we was we was burdled this week. Uh, I think Alanette would have told you by now, and we prayed for the person who jumped through the window and stole a few items, and we prayed that. You know, God would have mercy on him and bring him to salvation. And, you know, we, we forgive them uh, because, you know, we know that uh, our enemy is really not the person. It, Satan afflicted uh, us by sending a burglar to steal a few items. So we prayed before we went to bed and sure enough, uh, some of the uh, one of the items which was a valuable camera was returned so I mean praise God the word of God does work if we work the word you know if we uh, 
say we have faith and we do not do the word of God and do the the things in the word of God then we deceive ourselves anyway we don't need any devil to deceive us but if we work the word and be doers of the word we have mercy it says here mercy exceeds judgment and uh, so mercy rejoices against judgment see that and so uh, the word rejoices there means glorifies uh, so mercy exceeds judgment what does it profit by brethren though a man say he has faith and has not works can say of him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of our daily food and no one should say unto him depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding you give them those things which are needful of the body what does it profit even if even so faith if it has not works is dead yea a man may say that he has faith and have not works show me your faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God and thou doest well, even the devil believes that. <laughs> but if thou will know, O vain man, that the faith without works is dead. There you go. Faith without works is dead. Uh, didn't intend to read that far, but anyway, that's as that's that's as good as it's going to get. I um, I know that if we apply these simple things that we read from the Word of God, that the these are just foundational scriptures for a Christian to walk by and to live by. I know that if we live by these principles, we will fly like the eagles. Praise God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Isaiah 44 said, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up like the wings of eagles. Praise God. You want to know how to learn to fly like the eagle. Be too long in the chicken's pen living like a chook, you know. You don't belong in the chicken pen anymore. You have to learn to fly like the eagles, you know. And as the chicken grows up, he's been an uh, eagle. Um, uh, illustration of a, a man, he, he goes and steals a, an eagle's egg and he don't want to be caught. So he puts the, quickly puts the egg there in the chicken's uh, amongst the chickens and uh, sure enough he he got away without being caught with the eagle's egg because he got rid of it but when the the egg grew up amongst the chickens this eagle says i'm different from them i i want to fly like the eagle and they say no you can't do that you you you're a chicken like us you've got to be you know but as he grew up and as you grow up in the lord you realize that you don't belong in the chicken pen anymore. You want to learn to fly like the eagles. You're not to forget these things that you learn here. This is foundation principles that you live by for the rest of your life. If you want to live like a victorious Christian, you apply these principles. These are the keys that I give you. And then you'll understand the big, stronger things in God, the meatier things of God. Learn to be a horse for God. And that's a picture of a wild horse there, a picture of a wild horse in our cover. And uh, learn from uh, being a wild horse like this to being a trained horse like this, to be harnessed for the Lord. Don't run wild and rush up for the rest of your life. Allow 
God to train you through this word and be victorious Christian and fly like the eagles. I want to go down to Sydney and talk to Jim Newton and say, look, I got a, I haven't got a big congregation, but I've got a congregation with eagles in it. Praise God. They'll learn to fly like the eagle. Will that be you today that I'll be talking about? Is God preparing you for battle? Is preparing you to fly like the eagles? Put these principles in your life and learn to fly. If anyone needs prayer because they feel condemned, they could be released right now by receiving Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just pray that this word will go forth with power. It will not return void or empty, but it will accomplish that which you please. And I know, Lord, that you want all to receive salvation, no one to perish. So if there's anybody out there today need to receive Jesus, receive him now in Jesus' name by saying these words with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died for me on the cross and I identify with that. I now receive him as my Lord and Saviour. Come into my heart and forgive me for my sin. I believe I receive when I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you say a prayer like that, or those words, something to that effect. Today, you can receive Jesus into your heart and be born again and live an overcoming Christian life. That's how it's meant to be. God bless you. I hope to see you again next week. And please put your name in the visitor's book so if you're not here, we can send you something in the mail birthday card in the mail happy birthday to those people of July and please put your name in the book so we have your name for August any August birthdays do we have bye for now